Imagine a world where you wanted to securely share your local web services across the internet, you know, to like connect to your local dev machine, test out cloud services, share your work in progress with your colleagues, maybe even developing webhooks. Well, dev tunnels are here with a brand new CLI that you can use from any coding environment. Tune in. Hey everyone, I'm James and I'm back with another video talking about some awesome developer productivity tools. This one is again all about dev tunnels. In a previous video, I talked about dev tunnels inside of Visual Studio 2022. I demoed a way of building a web API, which usually is just running on localhost and then using a dev tunnel to tunnel your way into that local host and expose it to the internet. So you could go ahead and debug it locally, like on an iOS or Android device, share your work in progress if you're working on a website, or again, like working on you know, like different webhooks or things like that. This is a common practice, especially when developing web APIs, uh, but also when you're doing things like Teams development or other software development that needs to talk to your local host, but needs to easily access those things over a publicly accessible URL. And sometimes you need like cert certificates and other things like that to make it possible to work. And that's where dev tunnels come in. What's really, really cool is that dev tunnels are now available via the developer CLI that you can use on Windows, Mac, Linux, or anything like that. So let's go ahead and check it out. All right, so dev tunnels are available and you can check them out right here on the documentation, which I'll put in the links below. And all you need to do to get started is install it right here or just download the XE. Basically, it's just an XE that you download. So there's instructions here for Mac and Linux, and then you just log in. You can log in with your Microsoft account or GitHub account or anything that you need. So let's go ahead and check it out. I've put it right here in my tools directory. And we're going to go ahead and just open up a uh, PowerShell script here. You can do CLI, PowerShell, uh, Terminal. It doesn't matter. However you want to access things, it doesn't really matter. Uh, so after you have it installed, which I have it here, uh, we can go ahead and see I have dev tunnel. And the first thing you'd want to do is do user login. When you log in, this is going to basically allow you to manage for your account all your dev tunnels. Now I've already done that, so I can just say show here. And uh, this is going to show my account, which I'm logged in 100%. It gives you all the licenses, blah, 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 uh, there. So let me just go ahead and clear that out. Boom. All right. So what does it mean to have a dev tunnel? Well, let's start with the basics, right? So if I just do a dev tunnel here and I say echo HTTP uh, here and yeah, do slash P8080, this is basically going to create an HTTP echo uh, port for me here, a service here to listen to. So we're listening here. Here it is. If I go ahead and open this in a browser, we can see that it's going to echo whatever my call is to this port, to port 8080. So we see I'm doing a get. It's doing a bunch of information here that I would expect coming back and echoing that there. But that's just on 127.0.0.1 port 8080. What if I need to actually test that out? Well, that is where we can use a dev tunnel. So I'm going to come back into terminal, go to another tab. I'm going to do dev tunnel here. I'm going to say host. Now host is going to enable me to host a port. So I'm going to say dash P 8080. This is basically going to create a dev tunnel, hosting it on the local host of port 8080. So here I'm going to go ahead and spin it up and we can see that it's connecting to the host tunnel relay service. It's gone in and connected on port 8080, and it's given me this identifier, RZ875DVH, basically here. So here I can go ahead and now open this up, and this is going to enable me to connect. There we go. And now we can see that this is my exact same machine and the same service echoing back this information here, which is cool. So here we have that um, same information on 8080. We have the same one over here coming in. Now there's much more information coming in because this is obviously going up and then tunneling back down uh, across the wire. But what we can see is that this is pulling up and giving us the same information back. So that's pretty cool. So really, really straightforward. And it's just listening, echoing back and doing its thing. Now, if I come over here and I do a dev tunnel list, uh, this is going to show us all of our dev tunnels that we have. 
uh, that are running on our machine. So here we can see, we're gonna zoom this out. We have one host. Um, this is the, the dev tunnel ID and that's it. Now, if I go ahead and stop these, cause we don't really need them anymore. We can go back over to our list and we should see that we have zero dev tunnels, right? So these are sort of temporary dev tunnels that I'm creating in this state. Now there's many, many options here. And by default, it'll create a dev tunnel that will automatically have authentication built in, but there's a lot of options that you can go ahead and change the ports that it's obviously set on. You can change the authentication model uh, and you can even create sticky ones too. So let's see what this means in practice, right? So let's actually use a dev uh, tunnel over here. So I'm going to go into VS code and over here, I have, uh, my monkey endpoints that are running over here. So this is just a, um, a .NET API, but this could be any API, anything that you're running, uh, over here. And when I hit run this, open up the browser and it's running my swagger UI over here on 7164, which is the HTTPS version here. So when I go ahead and refresh this, I can go ahead and hit my get, try it out and go ahead and get my monkeys back, which is pretty nice. But again, this is on local host. So what that means is if, for example, I'm over here in Visual Studio and I have, uh, you know, a .NET MAUI application and I have some views and I have uh, my main page over here and I have all my monkey data and I have this monkey service and it's going off and it's trying to hit that local host, it's going to work fine on Windows, but not on Android. If I say get monkeys, it's going to throw an exception because the local host is not found. I can't do that port tunneling from the Android emulator to my local machine, which is where a dev tunnel comes in, right? Okay. So now let's say that we want to go ahead and expose this port and my web API. So my mobile application can talk to it. I'm going to say slash dev tunnel and I'm going to say host. And here I'm going to say port seven, one, six, four. I'm going to give it a protocol as well of HTTPS. What that's going to do is basically serve this up and enable me uh, to connect to it. So here we're going to say that this is hosting this port. I can go ahead and tap on it here. It's going to log me in and then it's going to enable me to continue. So automatically here I'm connected and I don't have anything in the default. So let's go to Swagger. And sure enough, this is now going to load up Swagger talking to my local host, right? So if I come into VS Code and I actually put a breakpoint here, right, on my monkey, this is running locally on my machine. I could come back into the Swagger UI, say, try it out, hit execute. And what we'll see is that we hit the breakpoint inside of VS code. So we're actually calling that on the local machine, even though my URL is this dev tunnel URL, which is really, really, really cool. Right? So now it's exposed, but I was logged in. Um, so that means that I am authorized to use this dev tunnel and I could use that on my mobile app, but probably what I actually want to do is create an anonymous one for this instance that is going to enable me to put that into my backend. So I don't have to worry about authentication of this dev tunnel to test it out. So let's go ahead and create that over here now. So I'm going to go ahead and stop this one. Okay. And if you want to just see uh, if it's still running here, we can do list and we can see that it shouldn't be running anymore. So let's clear it out and I can use that same exact protocol, but then I can say allow anonymous. There we go. This is going to create another dev tunnel with that port, but this time anonymous. So when I open this up, it's going to go right to the screen, no login, no anything. And when I say slash swagger, sure enough, it is now good to go. So what this means is I can take this, uh, endpoint here that we have. So let me go ahead and grab it here. I'm going to go back into visual studio. I'm going to go ahead and paste it over here. All right, I'm going to hit save and I'm going to hot reload this into the Android application. So now when I go ahead and get monkeys, it's going to call off to my API, which we can see hit the breakpoint here. Now it's going to return that data back into my mobile application because it's hitting that dev tunnel and loading that from my local machine, which is pretty awesome. Right. And this enables me to be doing this on other machines or asking my backend developers to expose this out to the internet. All right. Now here's the one problem that I have is that the default settings here for this dev tunnel, when I go ahead and close it down, if I list it out are going to be gone. 
right? No tunnels are found. That means if I create another one, it's gonna give me another new URL, and then I'm gonna to have to update my code. But we can actually create one that is sort of sticky and persistent. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna do slash dev tunnel in the API. I'm gonna say create, I'm gonna do dash A over here. And what we're gonna see is dash A is anonymous, and then I'm gonna give it a tag of my monkey API. And, and that's sort of optional here but it's gonna create this one here and it gives me a default tunnel of R25PX blah, 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 and an expiration of 30 days. So we can see the access control is this. Now, right now there's nothing connected and I haven't really specified the port either. So what I'm gonna do now is give it a port. So I'm gonna say dev tunnel and I'm gonna say uh, port create dash P of 7164. And again, the protocol call of HTTPS, there we go. So this is now going to assign it. So here we can see that we now have this port, this port number, this protocol, and it is anonymous. So now all I need to do is dev tunnel host, just like that, and it's gonna say, oh, what dev tunnels do I have? I have one, and right here I can open it up, connect to it, do slash swagger, and just like that, I now have this persistent one. So check this out. If I go in and I stop it and I host it up again and I come back and I refresh this, it's still running, right? It's still there. So check this out. If I stop it, clear this out, go to list, this dev tunnel is going to be created there. I can manage it. I can update it and create all the things. And here it is. It gives me this exact endpoint URL. So if I host this up, we'll have it running. And the last thing I want to show you is that there's also this dash inspect over here. So when I come over here, I don't need slash ready on it. If I just go to it, it's going to actually give me dev tools for the tunnel. So here I can go ahead and go ahead and reload this. We can see that there was a index swagger that came in here, which is nice. I can go into my monkey API, try it out. And what this is going to show me is that if I go ahead and go ahead and with this API, come back over here into my dev tools, that it's gonna show me everything that was happening right here, right? So we can see that index was loaded, swagger was loaded, then the monkey was hit as well with the endpoint, it's gonna show me everything coming in. So if you wanna de debug the, the network requests that are coming in, the different headers, all that other things, you have access to that with the dash inspect. So the only difference between this URL and this URL is dash inspect in there, which is really, really cool. Now I wanna point out that over in the dev tunnel uh, reference material, there is a whole bunch of things in here. So a bunch of global options, um, how to host a tunnel, connect to a tunnel, manage tunnels, manage tunnel ports, and manage tunnel port access, and tons of different commands and echoing and pinging and all this other stuff. So it's really, really advanced. All right, that is Dev Tunnel CLI in the nutshell. Of course, if you're using Visual Studio 2022 in Windows, it's built in, so you can actually just debug, create them all from Visual Studio, which is really cool. But if you're over on um, command line, you're using VS Code, you're on a Mac, you're on Linux, you can use this anywhere. It's so cool to see Dev Tunnels light up absolutely anywhere and this beautiful API creating persistent tunnels. I love it, just easily from any command line. All right, that's gonna do it from this video here. Hope that you enjoyed it. Make sure you check out my other video that I talked about earlier, all about dev tunnels in Visual Studio 2022. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. What do you think of this tool? Are you going to use it now that it's a command line? And if you are, let me know what you think. If there's other tools you want me to try out, drop them down there as well. All right. Well, thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to subscribe and jam that notification button over there uh, so you get notified every time I put a video. Oh, and like it too. Why not like it while you're down there too? It helps other people find the video. All right, that's gonna do it. Thanks for watching.